This was put on almost two years ago. My dad and I replaced the power steering pump on this. The accessory belt has to come off, obviously, if that's coming off. Removing this serpentine belt, the accessory drive belt here on the Volvo P2, um, get the tool. I got this one from FCP Euro. It makes your life so much easier. It fits perfectly in the 60. It also has a T50 and a 14 millimeter, depending on what your um, tensioner uh, setup is. But it fits in there perfect in the, in the little space you got. It goes in, locks in perfectly. It gives you all the leverage you're going to need to get the serpentine belt off. Additionally, take photos before you get in here with your camera. Look at the ones I took because you're going to need those when you go to put it back on and you're tired and you're not going to remember how the heck that thing went. Um, there's nothing super complicated about it. There's some just uncomfortable moments to it. Yeah, let's talk about the most uncomfortable moment. When my father and I put this back in, um, this unit always had, like the minute this went back in and it ran, it did not leak. There was no leaking from either of these junctions, the return, the supply hose from the reservoir or the um, pressured hose for the power steering. Um, there was... But the, the car had a distinct whine to it, um, just a little turbine sound, and it never leaked. I would put shop, shop towels under there. It never showed any signs of leaking. It never was low in the reservoir. It was always fine. It's been in there, uh, it's been in there uh, 22 months. So took it out. But I do remember my father and I, when we put this together, this hydraulic coupling, I'm not sure if this is steel or what, uh, but this is, this coupling is steel. Um, threading that in there in a car in a hydraulic coupling is very uncomforting. Um, it just feels like I'm stripping something out and I'm going to be stranded. So my father and I got this together and my, and my dad was like, this is way too tight. But it didn't feel like it was getting tighter. But we put it together and my dad and I got it pretty, pretty well in there. But we, we were like, okay, I'm not going any further. We were like, it's not leaking, we're not going any further. Further. But again, it always made that little whine. I really didn't like it, especially when the car would cold start. So um, when I went to put this back together, um, I started threading it. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm this is tight. I, I am I am cross threading this. I'm so afraid of this thing. Get these out of the way. Get this all disconnected. Take the take the bazooka tube off so you can get this thing at the right angle to get it to go square. But I kept tightening it, kept tightening it, kept tightening it, and I, now I have Vita. I didn't have Vita when we did this two years ago. Um, and when I was putting it in, you realize it says on Vita that this is supposed to go until they're about, the, the tip of the housing is about three millimeters from the unit. And I chickened out. I was like, oh my god, no way. This thing is tight. Started the car up, and this thing leaked like crazy. I had, I had stuff going everywhere. Um, so, had to go tighter. And I did that. It doesn't, it, it's difficult to turn it, but it's not getting harder. So I kept going. I'm like, oh God, you know, I'm going to kill this unit. This has got to be cross threaded or something's wrong. But it's just, it, it was just the coupling, the hydraulic coupling, and it's plumbing fit, I guess, as you would say, or coupling fit, hydraulic coupling fit. And it kept, it didn't get any worse. It just was difficult to turn. It kept going, kept going, kept going. And I'm like, okay, that's got to be within three. Started wiggling this. It's firm started the car up and the first thing I noticed besides the fact that it wasn't leaking is that um, the wine was gone the really high-pitched little wine that had, ever since we had this thing in there from two years ago so I think it was just not completely pressing on that o-ring um, the o-ring I did replace the one that came out was black and it was shredded to bits um, it came off as just a little itty bitty outline of a ring that was still in there and I reached in and pulled it out, pulled it out with just reached in there and pulled it out. On the um, tip of the coupling, hydraulic coupling, it, lack, lack of a better way to describe it, it was like a little dark area that looked like a little quarter pipe ring um, around the around the ridge. And I first I thought it was just some residue or you know just grit or something from it working. Um, it turns out that's actually the old ring. It had completely reshaped it, and I figured that out by looking at some Google images. Um, so I used this and literally pried that thing off, and it just split in half and came off, and then it was just a 90-degree angle to the tip. And I put a green one on because all the Google images showed a green one. So I got one of these HNBR O-rings, um, found the right size, got it in there. It went in better. Um, I was able to get this in and get it all the way to the 3 stopped and everything's working fine. 
Uh, the other thing I'm going to give you a point on on these is that this coupling is a 16 millimeter. And my Pittsburgh whatever wrench set from Harbor Freight doesn't even have a 16 millimeter. So there were two options. 17 can use. You just got to be really careful. It will go on there and, and it will turn it. Again, it doesn't get really super tight until you get into this distance where, you know, I'm inside that three millimeters. Um, but the other option was a five, five eighths. We'll go on there. You just got to get it just right and kind of wiggle it in. It will go on there and you can use it. The other pointer I'm going to give you is when you're tired and you're working late at night because this project went longer than you thought it was ever going to go. Um, and you go in there and you got the car up in the air and you're going to turn the go from stop to stop on the steering wheel and bleed the bleed the um, power steering fluid in the lines because it's been open forever because <laughs> you took forever. Um, be sure to put the cap on this. Even if the car turned off and you're just going stop to stop manually with the front end up in the air, um, it spit stuff everywhere. It was a oozing mess all over the floor. So don't do that. Be smarter than me. When you're filling up your uh, power steering fluid, be absolutely certain you do not go past the cold line on the little check dipstick. I'm going to open this one up and we'll show it to you. So on here, you want to be at the cold line. There's an add line down below that comes in later, but fill it to the cold and then go through your process of doing the bleeding process, going from stop to stop, put, lowering it down, holding it at the stops, take it for a drive, come back, it's going to be heated up, let it cool completely down, give it a couple hours. I gave mine overnight, checked it the next morning. It will be below the cold. Bring it just back to the cold, start the cycle over again. So as you're out driving the car after you've bled the air out initially, you may feel a shimmy. I felt a pretty uh, uncomfortable shimmy in the left front wheel. It was uh, primarily would kick in with higher RPMs and a slight move to the left or sudden move to the left with the power steering. The left wheel would become unstable. That got better with each cycle of bleeding. Um, uh, make sure it may take you four five six cycles. It got better every time the system as long as you only fill it to the cold line When the when the fluid is cold and it's had a cool down cycle completely overnight is my recommendation It will self bleed when you open this up Just keep it at the cold when you are out driving and you come home and the engines hot the power steering system is hot Mine never gets to the hot line. Um, I think mine is getting about halfway at the most. It may never reach the hot. The point is never fill it above the cold when it's cold. That's the, that's the principal line where you want to start. That's your starting point. And it will rise. It shouldn't go above hot. But mine never even gets close to that. Have fun. Be safe.